Welcome to section number five. This is the test drive. This is to see if you learned anything at all <laughs> or you've been sleeping at the wheel. Now, most tutorial hosts will give you a shape that is symmetrical or give you a shape that you don't really care about. What I decided to do is that for myself when I like to try something I like to care about the project. So what I decided to do is that a year ago I created all these fonts on a graph. It took me forever to do. So if you don't like the font I'm sorry about that. It takes a long time to be able to make the entire alphabet in upper and lower case as well all the symbols and numbers that go along with the same font. What I want you to do is go on the crochetcrowd.com on the top right hand corner enter into the search. So we have everything from uppercase to lowercase to symbols and numbers. You can choose anything that you want. So if you're look if your name is Anne, I want you to choose A. You can choose upper or lowercase. So you just have to say small a if you want the lowercase capital A in the search button if you would like the, that and then basically just print out the graph that is representative of the first letter of your name. I want you to use that but use the skills that I'm going to teach in this next section to be able to follow along. So once you understand that you have a great project at the end. Maybe you got a favorite grandchild or even just something else within the house that you want to put this on display afterward. Choose a letter that means something to you and then it makes this learning process a lot more fun. So let's begin to do your test drive. If you're choosing to do another sample just use the lessons that you're going to have and for what I'm doing today is that we're going to use the first letter of our first name in order to make it work. So I've already done it once just so that I could prove it to myself that I could do it and what I want to do is that I want to prepare the chart. So the test drive is about all the steps I'm going to do in order to get this to work. So this is I'm not going to skip forward and just assume that you know stuff. So if you want to fast forward the video you're more than welcome to do so. So the first step that I would do is I print off my graph. What exactly do I want? So if you have a graph that's not defined uh, by anything like borders so you want to do it. So you, uh, if you're using these from the crochetcrowd.com what you need to do is that you need to thicken up these lines. So what I want you to do is just highlight another other two boxes to the left just like you see here. So just on the chart just with a pen or a pencil even with a highlighter you could do that as well and just go in through and just highlight every two boxes to the left. Now you're going to notice different shades of different colors here and so anyone with an actual shade that is even really light you want to make sure you do know that you have to fill those in. For example these are all here shaded that I can see. So what I want to do is that I want to make sure I go to another two from that point. So it just makes it really easy. So this is how you thicken up your line if you're using this as an example and then you can notice that from there you'll get a nice thicker line just like so and uh, this is a really cool example. So let's uh, do that first and come back and then we'll start the next part. Another note that you could do, um, you could actually change this. So for example, see how the D is so flat at the top? What I did on the original example is that I decided that I looked in the middle and I said okay I want to raise up that middle D and I can raise it up just twice like so. So don't be scared to alter any of these patterns uh, that you want to do for yourself and just look at it and say okay is this thick enough here? Do I want to add something? You can just be very flexible on what you want to do if you want to add in a little hard or something. Just fill in the box and then when we get to that point of the, of the thing you can actually change it at that point. So don't be scared at any point to alter any of these patterns. So the next thing I want to do is I want to define my border and I'm going to define it by going two boxes outside of the last part of the D and I'm just going to follow that down. So it's the second one over like so and I want to go two boxes down over here. So just going to go like this and I'm looking for the two boxes over here. Just follow it down. So I'm basically defining my border like so and I'm going to go two boxes. It's going to take me right to the top line and top line down. So what I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to take a highlighter and I'm going to highlight my line that I'm going all the way around. It's up to you if you want to do that but I'm going to use, use a highlighter throughout my tutorial anyway and so this just helps me define exactly where I am on the project at any one time. The next part of the process is determining how many bobbins are we going to need separate yarn in order to make this work. So for example I'm going to show you a technique here to it's kind of it's not a cheating technique but it's a really convenient one. So what I want to do is that I want all of this and this is substantial area. I don't want to be rolling these onto little bobbins. 
Okay, I, I'm not lazy, I'm just being smart about it. So I want this, the whole section to be coming from the yarn ball. So what I have is that if you have three yarn balls, I'm, you could do like the outside middle and the outside of here. So here's the thing. If you only have one yarn ball and you were to determine that you gotta make bobbins, you can use one of the bobbins as your yarn ball itself. And what I wanna do is that I want the yarn ball to be in this area. But if I start, for example, if I go from the left to the right and I go across and I come all the way back, when I come on the third line, I'm gonna hit this area here, this D. Therefore, the yarn ball that I've started with is gonna start coming up the outside here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna start it off this side here. Okay, so when I come across, I'm gonna uh, single crochet, single crochet, and when I come on the third line, I'm gonna run into this D, but this D is gonna stop me from going any further. Therefore, this yarn that I start with is gonna end up on this side, so it's just planning ahead. Now I have a second yarn ball, so what I'm gonna use is that on the other side of the D, I'm gonna use the second yarn ball for here, and then the middle of the D, I'm gonna do a bobbin for that middle so that I actually, you know, can save myself some time. If you have a third yarn ball, you could do that as well. Now the D, how many yarn balls are we gonna need for there? I'm recommending just two. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna start off with the D coming up right here, but it's gonna divide off. So this yarn can't be over here in the way that I'm gonna do it with the thing. I would recommend two different yarns and not carrying it over. It looks a lot better if you can just have two separate. And you're gonna come across, so one's gonna come up here and once we get to this area, we're gonna join on a second one. So if you have two yarn balls of that color as well, you can use those instead of doing bobbins. Again, the creativity is up to you. So prepare your bobbins first. The next part we have to figure out how many single crochets do we need in order to fit this box in. I'm not worried about the, uh, the height at this point. So what I want to do is that I want to count the number of boxes that are within my frame and I have to have 33. Now to figure out the chain as we've already discussed, we actually have to do 33 plus one. So there's 33 boxes, we add an extra. That's because we're gonna do second single crochet chain from the hook, therefore that reduces it to one. So 34 will end up coming back to 33, which is exactly what we need. So we need to start off with that. And so I think we're ready now. Oh yeah, let's just do a few more fine tunes here. Um, I want to figure out some dimensions in order to keep myself organized. And so what I wanna do is that when we come across, I told you already that we wanna fill in this area, but how many stitches is, is this here from here? So what I wanna do is count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And I wanna write the word 20, or the letter numbers 24 right here. So that when I'm ready for this area here, I know I can just single crochet this background color for 24 single crochets before this starts. And I just wanna do the same on the other side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I know that there's 5 single crochets on this side. So I wanna just keep myself in balance. So I have uh, two over here, we have two over here, we have two up here. And basically once we start working on this, we're gonna be starting just to write some dimensions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this whole section from here to here is seven. This has an extra one, so from here to here is eight. This one has one less, so you got six. And so I just wanna keep myself organized as much as possible. Do pay attention for these lightly shaded, sh uh, shaded squares on my particular examples. You wanna make sure that you're doing it and again you can alter those if you wish. So without further ado, I think we're ready for the crochet element to this tutorial. So let's begin. I'm going to be starting off down here. I'm using a uh, super value today. I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. You just wanna match the yarn to the hook if you're looking at this and if you like it a little bit tighter, just reduce your hook size. So I already told you that I'm gonna start on this side. Remember that these boxes never count as the first chain. That the chain has to be the foundation in order for us to be able to, to do this. So I'm not gonna do all 34 with you. Remember we have the number of boxes plus one and so I wanna make sure I do that. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and five, and I'm gonna go all the way to 34. You may have a different number here, so just match it to the number that you have on your chart. I now have my 34 on my hook as per the instructions, and now I want a single crochet, second chain from the hook. So I'm gonna come one and two, turn it over so you get the back hump only, and begin to single crochet. Once you do the first one, the chain will stay upside down so that you're doing the back hump, and I want you to single crochet just 
in one into each all the way down and you should have a total count of 34 stitches by the end. You're gonna wanna make sure and count that to make sure that you have that at the end and once we get that done I'll show you how to uh, update your chart so that you can get ready for the next part. I've gone all the way across. I have the right count and simply what I wanna do with my highlighter, you can do it other ways if you wish, is that I wanna highlight that I am finished the first level of boxes and highlight it. Therefore if you have to get up or somebody bothers you, you can just come back to this and realize that you have completed those set of boxes. You know things happen here at home so I wanna make sure I never lose my count. So what I wanna do is that I wanna take my pen now and come on the other side and we're going to follow the boxes coming in the other direction. So I wanna put an arrow that I'm going in that direction just for a visual for myself and I know that there's nothing in my way. There's no color changing so all I'm just going to do is just turn my project and I'm going to follow the boxes from this side. Okay so you see it's empty so I'm just gonna follow it this side and I just want to chain one first and then begin to single crochet across the top of the row. So just continue to do this and this is for row number two. So my next line is now done. I'm just going to take my highlighter and just highlight that I have finished that line just like so. So now I'm ready for the next line. So if your letter is starting anywhere now, like if you decided to do the two like I did, you wanna change your colors exactly where it's going to appear in the box. So this time I want to put my arrow on this side that I'm going this direction and I already counted it out so if you did that for yourself this is where it comes in handy and we wanna make sure we have our next yarn available up and ready for you to do that. So I'm gonna be using the same blue as that I did for my other example because I like it. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna start off the next row and I have to go 24 single crochets. So I'm gonna just stick with me here. Even if you have like a letter A, M or whatever and it's now starting in this line, it doesn't matter. It's the same technique. So we're going to chain one first to start and then we're going to single crochet for 24 and this is one and two, three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, 23 and 24 but this time the 24th one is the one just before we change the, the color. We do not wanna finish that stitch. So no matter where you are here this is what you need to do. So we're gonna introduce our next color. I want you to leave an extra long tail like I showed you already before in changing colors and adding the bobbins. So I just want you to loop this yarn on Okay, so that is your 24 stitch now finished but it's finished now with the color that we wanna start off. You can see that there is four boxes. So all I wanna do is that I wanna crochet and I want to leave this yarn. Okay, this is the, the white yarn here. I need to, before I begin is that I need to pull it forward like I already showed you on changing colors. Okay, we're gonna let the straggler just fall out to the back. Okay, so we gotta make sure that this yarn is now forward and we just single crochet for the first three. There is four boxes but we're only gonna do three. So one and before we begin we just wanna pull things a little more snug. So two and three. Okay, so now this time is that we want to make sure that we are going to begin. So we're going to do the next one here. So we're gonna do, this is three and now the fourth is going to be like this. We're not gonna change, or we're not gonna finish the stitch with the same blue. We're gonna pull this blue forward and we're going to get our next color. So if you're gonna need another bobbin for this side if you don't have one or in my case I have two yarn balls that I'm working with. So I'm just going to grab this one here and I'm leaving an extra long tail so I can deal with that at the end and with this fourth one now done I want to make sure that I finish that fourth with the color that I wanted. So I'm gonna leave it with the white, leave the straggler to the back side, make sure that this blue one is pulled forward and finish the rest of this line using the white. 
So whenever you do these, if you have not reviewed on how to change color, you need to make sure that these stragglers stay on the front side of the project as you're working across. So you can see that the white and blue is on the front side. So when we go to turn this project around, we can actually um, just be ready for those. So in this line here, what I wanna do is that I wanna say, okay, yes, I'm done. So I highlight everything that I've done and now I put my arrows that I wanna go back in that direction just like so. And so there's five boxes but guess what? See how this box is over top this box? I just have to look for where this box is to begin to start that. So without further ado, let me show you how to do that. So let's turn our project and we're just gonna turn it around and we're going to start off and this time we're we'll reading from this side of the box going this way. So there's five empty or five of the whites. So we got one, so it's a chain one, single crochet, first one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth but we do not wanna finish that. Pull this yarn forward, okay? This yarn is the straggler, don't worry about that. And we wanna reach around the back and grab that blue that we worked with and it shows that we have to do this for five boxes, okay? So we're, let's just do that. So we're just gonna pull up that one and now we're ready for it. So we're going to single crochet into these boxes. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so here's the deal is that this white is stopping right here but we're actually gonna carry the blue over one more. So what I want you to do is that I want you to trap that white in there. So we have, when we finish this one, so this is four. So going in, okay, trapping this white one on top so that we can carry it forward. We talked about this when we were changing colors and carry it one over and now we bring the blue forward and bring the white up. So what's that, what that does is that it produces no carry lines over on the back side. So if you don't bury it here, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna see the string on the outside of the project and it would be really terrible. So now you're looking at it, okay, now that I've done the blue here, there's nothing left in the way. So I'm just gonna single crochet myself for the remainder of the back. Make, again, my lines are in the front like so and it's just good to go. And now we're ready for the white for the remainder of the line. There's nothing in the way. Make sure that we bring the blue forward before we begin that so that it's on the right side. So it's on the front side of the project and just single crochet yourself all the way across. So remember whenever you're changing these colors that whenever you finish with the line all of the colors changes. The yarn should be on the front side of the project. So this one is right here. Okay, so that just makes it very easy. Let me finish this line and get you started. So now I'm completed this whole line of back over and I have all my stragglers on the right side so I finish off. And so I just keep working on my chart just like you see and basically I just keep going back and forth. So the next one I'm just gonna go this way. So what I want you to do is that I want you to finish your letter what you know is already to be true. And so basically once you get to these parts here, so for example once you get to this blue here, you're going to end up with the white here. So you're gonna have a new bobbin starting here if this is happening to you. It could be, you could have a different letter, it could be even a G or whatever. You just need to make sure that you start your new color there and then you'll have a new bobbin for whatever a color cannot go all the way across. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you to do. We already have the tutorials for changing techniques and ideas. Remember that earlier before in changing colors that I gave you clues on what happens when the yarn needs to be carried over. So um, like for example here, this color might end up having to start here. I showed you how to bury your yarn so that you will never see that happen and the same thing exists with the white. So if you ever have this white also needing to carry, it doesn't matter where it is. It just, especially over here, the white will stop here and basically um, over here and then basically it needs to somehow jump over. You need to figure out on how so you just basically just need to figure out your bobbins. When we come back I'm going to show you uh, basically I want you to get everything done up until the end and I'm gonna show you how to do the border for this in order to make that really kind of fancy idea for you know making something that's permanent for you. So now my D is done and I have followed the instructions and basically so I had a bobbin here, a bobbin here, I had one on the outside, one on the inside and one here as I did it and basically it looks like it's all one solid bobbin but in actual fact it's not. 
So now what we have to do is that we have to look through our project and whatever we started or finished off yarn, we need to weave in those ends so it's gone. So most of it was on this side. So this is where we started and remember how I said that in the color changing techniques is that when you start a bobbin you're going to end up leaving a string like this. So taking a darning needle, you just need to bury that into the project. So you just lightly come in underneath the, the fibers. Don't go too deep, you don't want it through everything. And just going in enough and you want to go in three directions. So I've just gone in one, okay? And I want to come back in the same direction from which I just came for two. Okay, and then I just want to go one more time. It's impossible for the afghan to stretch in three different directions at one time. Therefore, this will never pop out when you do this. I want you to do this for all of the single, uh, all of the stragglers that are hanging out of your project at this time. and. See, so now you can just simply just take your your scissors and just simply cut right down to the wick. You'll never see it, and I want you to do this for everywhere that you see it, yarn strands hanging out of your work. Before I continue with the next part of this tutorial, what I want you to do when you're down here at this at a level here is that we want to make sure that we understand which is the front and which is the back side. Certain letters like R's and stuff where you have two things coming down, you might actually get confused at any point just in case you ever lose your spot on here on what is the front and what side is the back. Because if you turn over your D, for example, one side the D is going to be perfect and the other side it will be backwards. So what I just do for myself is that I take another yarn strand just like so and I say to myself, okay, if this is the back where I started over here, this must be the front side of my project. So at this time, what I just do while I'm working on it and I'm remembering to do it is that I just put a yarn strand just behind one of the strings like so. So that I know that if I'm ever lost at a certain part of my project that I know that the strand is on the front side of my project. So it's very easy to get lost so I would recommend that you do that. That's just my own personal tip. So let's uh, get on with the next part of this tutorial right now. So I'm now ready to apply a border and what we're going to do is we're going to do a fun little border like so because if you want to keep it as a momentum for yourself for that you did this test drive, we can begin to do that first. So what I want to do with myself is that you see here this is the front side. I did this actually when I was doing it. I just probably haven't pointed that out to you at this moment. What I want to do is that I want to take the same color that I did the, the outside of the trim and I want to apply that to the outside. So because we've done single crochet across, you're going to have all your stitches here, one row high equals one single crochet. So all I just want you to do at this point is that I want you to chase the outside of this entire thing with just single crochet. So start off with the very first one here, okay, right on the edge, and I want you to single crochet in there three times. So on the corners, apply three single crochets into the same stitch so that you can accurately turn your corners. So that, so this is one. So I went in and I chained one first and now I'm single crocheting three times. Okay. And now I simply, I just want to work down the side of the project. Doesn't matter, you could just start on the top, but I'm just going to work down the side. Basically every row is one single crochet as I'm going all the way down. And once I get to the other side to turn the corner, the last one here, I'm going to apply three single crochets and then work along the south sides. And so this time I want you to single crochet around the entire edge of this project. Once you get all the way back around, I just want you to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that you started with and this is in the corner. Okay, and let's just slip stitch one more to take you to the actual corner corner. So this is the middle one of the three, slip stitch there and I want you to chain three, one, two and three and I want you to put in four more double crochets into that same stitch. And what we're going to do is a double crochet revolution all the way around. But when we turn corners on this revolution is that every corner should have a total of five double crochets. But because we chained up uh, already three that, that counts as one of them. Just like so. So just a uh, double crochet five times into this corner. So just double crochet four times into this corner and then you will, with that chain that includes one. So every single crochet now is going to get a double crochet all the way around. So on the very corners, on the middle one of the three that you did, 
I want you to put in five double crochets there in order to turn the corner effectively. Please do that all the way around. Once you get all the way back around, I want you to just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. And I want you to fasten off at this time, so just grabbing your scissors, like that. And I just want you to weave in the ends. So this time we're going to pull the blue up that we did. You can do any of the colors that you want to. Remember, it's your own creativity. You can do whatever you want. So I want to grab my blue and I want to create a, a, I want to turn my project around. So this is the, it's easier to turn your project around for this particular step. So here's the front of my D. Let's turn it around and get to the back. And I'm going to have you do, we're going to do some back post, or sorry, uh, front post double crochet. This here is as a result of turning it around. I can either back post on this thing, it's harder. So what I just did is I'm turning my project around to the back and it's gonna it's easier to front post. So I'm gonna start off with a slip stitch or slip knot. And I'm gonna come to the outside here and there's going to be five stitches into this one here. Come around to the middle and I want to just come around to the post only. And I want to just fasten on and then chain three. One, two, three. And I want to put back post double, or sorry, front post double crochet for four more times. So just going around there. It's going to look weird, um, but you need to do this in order to make this pattern work. So this is three, and four, and five. Okay, it's easier to go from the front post than it is for you to reach around to the back to do it on the front side. So basically, every post that you run into, so you're just going to pull it apart. You see the next one, and you're just going to do a front post double crochet into each one going all the way around. So on the very corners when you have the five double crochets from the row below all you just have to do is put in five uh, double crochets right into the, our back post. All you have to just all you have to do is put in five front post double crochets into the very corner one so it's the one of the it's out of five it's the middle one of the three and just simply just continue to go all the way around with doing this technique and I'll see you in back in just a second. So all you're going to do now is just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three just like so and I want you to fasten that off. I've got one more layer to do, one more round to go. Just gonna fasten this off, just weave it in. The next one we're going to create a little bit of a ruffle edge. Looks like kind of, so it's not so flat looking. And what we want to do is that we want to rejoin the white on. So it could be any color that you wish. Let's turn it back around so that you have the actual front of your project just like so. And you can see the nice edge that's on the inside. So we have the front. Let's grab on a corner. Doesn't matter which corner we're going to start off with. And let's just create a slip knot. So here's what I want you to do. We're not going to expand anymore on the corners. So essentially right now we're just going to come into the corner one of the five. So just the middle one of the three or sorry the, the third one in and just fasten on chain one and then single crochet and then chain three. One, two, three and then coming back in to that same one single crochet. So now I want you to skip one stitch, go to the second over and do the same thing. So single crochet, chain three, two and three, single crochet. Okay, skip the next stitch, go to the next one over. So we're just gonna do the same thing, one, two, three, all the way around and you end up with a really great edge as a result. Once you get all the way back around, all you just have to do is just do that final one and you're just gonna join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with. Okay, so I'm just gonna single crochet and I'm just going to join it to the beginning and I am done. I'm just gonna weave in my ends, just trim my work and just do a better job of weaving in the ends at this point. But this is the test drive done. It's complete and let's uh, zoom this thing out and just see what it looks like from this point of view. So this is the uh, wrong side, so this just up here. And so basically I can remove out this. I could have done it sooner but I just wanted to leave it in for my own reference. And essentially I now have my test drive of my letter and it's a great test sample in order to really see if I know what I'm doing when it does graph GANs. So, so this is it for now on behalf of the crochetcrowd.com as well as Yarn Inspirations. I'd love to see your creativity. Make sure you come to our Facebook pages. If you do this I'd love to see what it looks like and uh, let's see what letters you came up with. And until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Yarn Inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. We'll see you.